when awful darkness and silence reign over the great ground bullying plain through the long, long wintry nights, when the angry breakers roar as they beat on a rugged shore, when storm clouds brought on the towering heights of the hills of the changeling boar, then through the vast and gloomy dark there moves what seems a very spark, a lonely spark with silvery waves, piercing the cold black night, a meteor strange and bright. Hither and thither, the vision strays. A single lurid light. Slowly it wander, pauses, creeps, and on it sparkles, flashes, and leaps. And ever as onward it gleamy goes, a light on the bong tree stems it throws. And those who watch at that midnight hour, from hall or terrace or lofty tower, cry as the wild light passes along. The dawn, the dawn, the wintry dawn through the forest goes. The dawn, the dawn, the dawn with the love of the snows. Long years ago, the dawn was happy and gay till he fell in love with a jumbling girl who came to those shores one day. When the jumblies came in the sea, they did landing at eve near the summery bed where the oublon oysters grow and the rocks are smooth and gray and all the woods and the valleys ring with the chorus they daily and nicely sing. Far in view, far in view, are the lands where the jumblies live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue, and they went to sea and to save. Happily, happily passed those days while the cheerful jumblies stayed. They danced and sang their own night long to the plaintive pipe of the lively dawn in moonlight, shine or shade. For day and night he was always there by the side of the jumbling girl so fair. With her sky blue hands and her sea green hair, to the morning came on that hateful day when the jumbly sailed in their sea away, and the dawn was left on a cruel shore, gazing, gazing for evermore, ever keeping his weary eyes on that pea green sail on the far horizon, seeing the jumbly course still as he sat all day on a grassy hill. Far in view, far in view, on the lands where the jumblies live, their heads are green and the hands are blue, and they went to sea and to save. But when the sun was low in the west, the dawn arose and said, "What little sense I once possessed has quite gone out of my head." And since that day, he wanders still by lake and shores, marsh and hills, singing, "Oh, somewhere in valley or plain, might I find my jumbling girl again?" For ever I will seek by lake and shore till I find my jumbling girl once more. Play the pipe with silvery squeaks. Since then, the jumbling girl he seeks, and because by night he could not see, he gathers the bark of the twig gum tree on the flowery plain that grows, and he wove him a wondrous nose, a nose as strange as a nose could be, of vast proportions and painted red, with tied with cords to the back of his head. In a hollow, rounded space, it ended with a luminous lamp with it suspended, all messed about with the bended stout to prevent the wind from blowing it out, and with holes all around to set the light in gleamy rays on a dismal night. And now each night and all night long, over those plains still roams the dawn, and above the wail of the chimney snipe, you may hear the squeak of his plaintive pipe. While ever he seeks, but seeks in vain, to meet with his jumbly girl again, lonely and wild, all night he goes, the dawn with the luminous nose, and all who watch at the midnight hour, from hall or terrace or lofty tower, cry as they trace the meteor bright moving along through the dreary night. This is an hour when Forfy goes, the dawn with the luminous nose, yonder over the plain he goes, he goes, he goes, the dawn with the luminous nose.